Hello and welcome to the Caring Matters Podcast. I'm Liz Tasson, the volunteer host, and I'm here today with Ann Sutton Burke. And Ann and I are going to talk today about the issue of sibling caregivers and maybe older caregivers as well. Um, Ann has both personal and professional experience along this line. So, Ann, let's begin with just talking about the sibling sure. dynamic mm -hmm. that um, you see even among your siblings, mm -hmm. but also professionally, uh, some of the dynamic that comes out when you know a group of individuals who all have their own opinions about mom and dad are, mm -hmm. are uh, trying to work together. You know, it's interesting here, I work at Jewish Family Service and as the Director of Aging and Caregiver Services, we work more and more with families where there's multiple siblings struggling with the issue of caring for aging parents. Sometimes they're in town, sometimes they're out of town, or some kind of com combination. We even have folks internationally, um, we've worked with families where um, some siblings are out of the country as well. So it always makes for an interesting dynamic because you've got a lot of different uh, viewpoints. Uh, sometimes they work well together. Um, unfortunately, the folks that come to us, usually there is an issue where they're either, um, they're all on the same page, but maybe mom or dad is not, or maybe the siblings themselves are not on the same page um, at any given time. So you have all this changing dynamic that happens all the time, um, which is it's very hard for families. Um, it's not always a well-oiled machine. Yeah, so what, as you're thinking about what would help a family mm -hmm. to be more um, together mm -hmm. as they uh, take care of their parent, mm -hmm. are there some tips that you could offer that you see might keep people in the right frame of mind to work together? I think there's definitely some tips that are helpful. Um, for us, you know, we do like it when a family will designate a lead person in the family. Not that they have to make the decisions, but as far as the communication, uh, it's somebody to, to that we can communicate with that we'll know will go on and speak to the rest of the family. Um, and that just helps kind of keep that stream of communications clear. So I think that's nice if someone can be designated as the lead person. It doesn't have to be the oldest or the youngest or whatever. It's whoever seems to be the most maybe logical of the group um, that can help uh, you know, share that information. I think the other technique that I know my own family has used and we often suggest to people is the idea of doing kind of conference calls. You know, when you've got long distance caregivers is, you know, all getting on the phone at the same time. It's not that hard nowadays with technology to do that and uh, it, it's very helpful to have kind of family meetings uh, and you can do those remotely. Um, I've even been involved in Skype. Uh, conversations, oh, yeah. um, you know, where we've had a meeting and I was there by Skype or I was in on a care conference by phone. Um, so you can be included even if you are long distance. It's much more possible these days. Now what's your uh, advice in terms of including uh, mom or dad mm -hmm. on this call mm -hmm. with the siblings? You know, I think it depends. You know, we um, here uh, always struggle with the idea of who is our client. Mm -hmm. So um, when caregivers come to see us initially, um, they are our client. So we're focusing on things from their perspective. At the same time, we educate them about the fact that mom and dad are adults, they have the right to make decisions of their own, and they have the right to make decisions you don't agree with or maybe bad decisions. Uh, so I always try to set that context for caregivers. Um, you know, when we're working with the older adult, you know, and they come to see us first, um, they're our client, or maybe the caregivers hire us to work with the older adult, they're our client. Um, and sometimes the whole family, you know, is there at the same time. So it varies on the situation. You know, when I'm meeting with caregivers, I really try to focus in on the situation from where they're sitting right now. Um, and that's, you know, how we go about it. Uh, you know, when you're meeting with an older adult, though, I think it's important to represent that they do have the, the right to continue to make those decisions. Oftentimes we'll see, uh, unfortunately, older adults kind of swoop in sometimes, make a lot of decisions, and maybe mom and dad aren't feeling well, they've just been in the hospital, they've had a fall, and um, so they may not be as uh, resistant as they should be, and they'll go along because they want 
to um, please their two kids. And we see the opposite too. You see every kind of flavor of the, the ice creams are, that are out there in this situation, so. Okay, um, and I guess everything changes when the older adult would have cognitive issues and dementia. Correct, Correct. Then, then you have to be a little delicate about how much they're included mm -hmm. in the decisions, mm -hmm. I'm sure. I think so. I think you can, um, I often will say to family members, tell me about your mom and dad 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Were they um, a social person? Um, you know, what do you have as a sense from decisions they've made in the past, what their wishes would be? I think most families can kind of get a sense for what that is based on their family member from the past. So, and use that as their guide. Um, you know, for example, in my own family, um, my mother's a very private person, so, you know, we try to focus on, you know, how can we kind of create a, a place where she can have some privacy, continue to have some mm -hmm. privacy uh, in the facility where she lives. So, I think that's an important thing for her. So, you can have to decide what's important for each family. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good point, and I've never heard the question about mm -hmm. how was she or he in the past mm -hmm. that gives you context towards the decisions you're making now. Right. You know, sometimes I'll have families that are worried, you know, dad mom has is mom has died, dad's living alone, he's isolated, they're worried they're not, you know, he's not being social. And then I'll ask, well, how was he 10, 15 years ago? Well, you know, he kind of kept to himself and so you know sometimes caregivers want something because they think it's just the right thing. Uh, and it's not always um, in context with what that person's personality is. So what you're looking for when you ask that question is how does this uh, the current situation mesh with their personality right. and how they've mm -hmm. always been mm -hmm. versus just someone else coming in and just putting something on them that doesn't really exactly. match who exactly. they are. I think another thing like you can do if, um, is, is write down things about your parents, what they liked, what their interests were. I think this is helpful whether they're in, home, in the home and getting care in the home for caregivers that are coming in paid caregivers or in a facility as well to give people that kind of social history of uh, your older adult in your family. That's a great idea. I just never mm -hmm. thought of this before, but as you're mm -hmm. talking, I'm thinking, you know, caregivers listening now, you know, to sit down and just do exactly what you have just said. Mm -hmm. Think about mom 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Think about now. Think about things she liked to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have some context to the current situation. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a brilliant idea to help people really assess what's important now and and uh, help make decisions for now rather than with the great context of the past. I agree. Yeah, I agree. very good. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love the idea. Well, let's talk more on a, mm -hmm. a future podcast about long distance caregiving okay. because I know you're involved with that mm -hmm. and I know a lot of caregivers, you know, like you mentioned, are maybe even overseas or mm -hmm. uh, far away from their loved one, uh, okay. but still want to be part mm -hmm. of of that decision that process, making and yes. process. So mm -hmm. we'll talk more about that. Okay. Uh, so thank you, Anne, for that, in, those insights. Um, I want to thank our sponsors Vitas Hospice, Hillebrand Home Health, Care, uh, Home Care by Blackstone, Family Bridges Home Care, Lifespan, and Bailey. I'm Liz Tasso, and I want to thank you for listening, and always remember that caring matters.